Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about the Dell PowerEdge MX750C Blade Server, and specifically we're going to focus on memory. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge MX750C. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's hop in. Uh, so this video is specifically focused on RAM. Uh, we're going to go over the different speeds, the different sizes, the different types. Uh, we're going to physically install them, uh, show you uh, the different channels inside. Uh, we're going to show you how to max it out. And if you're not maxing it out, what are the uh, correct DIMM slots to put your modules in? So let's just hop in. So uh, let's start with the speeds. The different speeds that you can get will be 2666, 2933, and 3200. Those are going to be your speeds. The sizes you're going to get are going to be 8 gig, 16 gig, 32 gig, 64 gig, 128 gig, 256 gig. But really, the 128 gig and 256 gig you can only get with one type of RAM. And that brings us to what type of RAM is compatible with my MX750C. Well, you have two types. You have ECC registered, which is also known as an RDIM, and you have load reduced, also known as an LRDIM. With ECC registered, the max that you can get is 32 by 64 at 3200 speed, which means you can top out at two terabytes. Whereas with load reduced, you can get four times the scalability. You can put in 32, 256 gigabytes at 3200 speed and get all the way up to eight terabytes. So there's some uh, benefits as a whole with load reduced uh, to just basically get more scalability. So sometimes people ask, uh, you know, which one should I get? And it really kind of uh, depends on your plans with your system. So if you're thinking, hey, I might upgrade in the future and you're only, let's just say, buying 16 sticks now, uh, I would recommend buying um, 16 uh, load reduced modules so that you can add even higher modules down the line because you cannot mix load reduced and ECC registered. You have to have just one type of RAM in your system. They are not compatible together. So, all right, well, now that we know a little bit more about the uh, the RAM, the speeds, the sizes, uh, let's hop in and show you how to actually upgrade this. But before we do, I'm gonna grab my ESD gear and be right back. All right, have my ESD gear on. We're safe to work on our blade. So we're gonna go ahead and take our RAM, put it to the side. We're gonna open our latch, just gonna push the uh, blue top. We're gonna slide this down pretty much like any chassis you've been in before. So before we hop in, I wanna point out a couple of things as a whole. So this is CPU one, which is gonna control the 16 DIN slots up here. This is CPU two, which is gonna control the 16 DIM slots down here. Um, they are color coded, so you can see that it goes white, black, white, black, white, black, white, black. White is the start of the memory channel. Black is the second slot in the memory channel, which means there are eight memory channels per CPU and 16 memory channels between the two CPUs as a whole uh, for the 32 DIMM slots. And the uh, the channels are important. Uh, and people people ask why, what you know, what's the importance of the channel? So essentially, you want to if you're only let's just say putting in eight or uh, 16 DIMMs as a whole, you want to make sure that you're installing them in the correct slots, which will be all the white slots. You will not actually start using some of the black slots until you get to the point where you're going uh, past 16 DIMMs. Uh, and the reason being is you just wanna have the max performance as a whole. So you wanna have your DIMMs evenly spread out across all the channels. So all the channels are performing at once at an equal performance and you don't overload a few channels as a whole. So that would be the correct configuration. So now let's go ahead and start pointing out uh, what are the, which are the, uh, which slots, which slots. So uh, for starters, one thing that's very important is uh, this uh, air baffle or air shroud right here is going to have everything labeled on here. Uh, it might be tough to see on camera, but it shows that this is CPU one, shows it's a CPU two. It shows uh, what are the dim slots. It shows that uh, if you come over here, this is a one. And what I'm gonna do is I'll take this out I'm going to set it right here so that we can see a little bit better. So we're going to leave the uh, the black blanks in here. Um, and, the, and if you notice, all the blanks are in the black dim slots because, again, you use all the white dim slots first. So it, it just kind of, this is a good illustration as a whole. If you were only putting in 16 dim slots, which is what we're about to do, you'll be using all the white dim slots. But anyhow, so if you come over here, this first slot right here is a1. Now A2 you actually have to swing around over here which is a little bit uh, confusing. Uh, so this white dim slot right there is A2. Then you have to swing back around and you're actually going to skip over a white slot and go to this outside uh, white slot and that is A3. And then same thing when you swing back around over here this outside slot is A4. So I'll go over that again. You go A1, A2, A3, A4. And then you're going to swing back around over here and this is A5. 
swing on the outside here, a six, come back here, a seven, a eight. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and install our first eight dim slots right now and just show you uh, some tips to do that. So one of the things I like to do, I like to pop out all of my tabs to start. So we're gonna open all of the, uh, the white dims, or the white uh, slots here. And I just like to do that so that when I'm installing the module, I'm not uh, fumbling around. I like to do that before I'm holding the module. The next thing I want to note right here is a notch. This notch on the leads is called a key. This key is important because it's not perfectly centered. So you do need to make sure that you line your module up properly. If you have it facing the wrong way, you could potentially damage the, the leads on the dim slot and break the dim. Or even worse, you could damage the dim slot, which potentially would mean you might have to replace the motherboard as a whole. Neither of these are uh, an issue that you want to run into. So, all right, we're going to start on the outside over here at A1. So we're going to go ahead and line everything up. So one of the things I always like to point out in all of our videos, when you're installing a module, right now it looks like the module's in there, but really it's not fully seated. And a common uh, user error that we see all the time uh, is someone thinks they have a bad dim and it's really just not fully seated. So we'll tell people to rotate their dims around and then they end up properly seating it in a different slot. And really it's just about seating. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you right here. You're gonna hit these two clicks. And what'll end up happening is uh, most of the time someone will push it in but not all the way and the tab will be just slightly hanging and not fully in and if it's not fully in then it doesn't pull the lead all the way down to make a firm connection with the dim slot so that's something we always stress the point of because it is a very very common uh, user error so now we're going to come over here and we're going to line up a2 so just click click and then we're gonna swing back over here to a three. And really, and really this is actually a very quick process in real time. If you were uh, upgrading this and you're just wondering how hard this is to do or how long it's gonna take, I mean really you can knock out this whole chassis in five, 10 minutes. Um, it's a very easy process. Uh, I always say videos like this online make it a lot easier too uh, to show you uh, how easy it really is to, to do it and which slots to do it. Um, so now we've done uh, A5 and we're gonna swing over here to A6. And now we are going to knock out a seven. And a eight. And so for the sake of time, um, I'm just gonna point out the channels real quick uh, for the second CPU, but uh, we're gonna install them off screen. Um, so if you look at the, uh, the second CPU, and again, it's labeled right here on uh, the air baffle, uh, but I just want to point them out as a whole. Uh, the first white, or I shouldn't say the first, but the first slot is um, B1 over here. You're going to swing back around, B2, B3, B4, B5, B6, B7, B8. So they're in the exact same format, but this is just uh, the second CPU size. So now we'll go ahead and install these off screen. All right, so we filled up CPU2. We've installed uh, 16 modules. Uh, we have this uh, all loaded up. Now again, you can max this out and just fill this up completely with 32 uh, slots and get all the way up to eight terabytes, which is pretty awesome. Um, but this is just what we're building out for a customer right now. It's just gonna be 16 DIMM slots. Um, you know, if you made it this far, hey, click that like, smash that subscribe. If you're looking for any custom built servers yourself, whether that's a blade, a rack mount, a tower, a workstation, we do Dell, we do HPE, Supermicro, IBM, Cisco. We do new, we do used. We would love the opportunity to earn your data center or your home labs business. Please email us at sales at cloudengine.com. That's sales at cloudengine.com. Thanks for stopping by. Take care, guys.